Okay, um, I think we can go ahead and get started. So once again, thank you everyone for coming to the webinar today. We're very excited to introduce to you the um, first open call for the FARA on project. Um, today we'll go over some information briefly about the, the project, um, and then we'll go into a little bit more information about what will be um, coming up uh, for the open call, how that process will work. Um, as most of you probably know, the call is now open. And so we hope we can address any questions that you have here. I'll be joined today um, in speaking by my colleague, Alenka Volk, um, and my other colleagues from, from other Fair On partners, um, Andre uh, Gergich and Gabriela Giomateo. And um, we'll go ahead and get started here. We also have uh, many of the pilot um, coordinators in this project and some technology partners. And so hopefully together we can answer your questions. Um, a note that we are recording this um, so we can post it later. So um, please do keep that in mind as we proceed today. Uh, we will use the questions that you ask to go ahead and update the frequently asked questions on our web page. Um, so, as I said, a little bit of an overview of what we're going to do today, um, and we're just getting started now, so we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, for questions today, please use the Q&A feature that's built into the Zoom webinar. Um, you can also use um, we can also use the, the chat feature. Um, however, it's easier for us to monitor questions in Q&A, but fe feel free to use the um, the discussion, the chat to communicate as you go along. Um, do keep in mind that there is a little blue pop-up um, option just above where you enter the chat. Um, and if you select uh, everyone there, then everyone will see your messages. Otherwise, it will by default only go to hosts and panelists. So please do keep that in mind. And uh, we will be monitoring this chat, but uh, do keep in mind questions are much easier for us in, in Q&A because we can track them a bit more closely. And uh, you can upvote other questions if there are questions that have been posed that you also have or that you're interested in, and people in chat can respond to and add to those questions as well. So thank you very much for attending, and now we can talk a little bit more about the project. So Farah on is a Horizon 2020 project. Um, and our main goal is to improve the well being, dignity, and independence of older adults in Europe. Um, we're doing that primarily by providing um, enhanced smart solutions for healthy and active living. And we are doing that by developing platforms that are based on existing technologies. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here, we're trying to simplify um, the interconnection of existing devices. And that's where. Um, some of our technology partners are coming in and also where you as potential applicants and uh, potential future partners come in as well. We are doing large scale pilot testing in five countries, although there are six pilots and more pilot sites than that. And we're doing a variety of um, types of testing as well, including pre-validation, validation, and actual piloting. Uh, you will join us towards the end of the pre-validation phase uh, where we are still developing and refining some of our technologies and solutions, and you will help us then um, through that process as well. So each of these pilot sites has developed um, several use cases that we're interested in pursuing as um, as a way to pilot our project and, and to show the usefulness of the platform and um, demonstrate that we can make an impact on the lives of older adults and their caregivers. And we did that by working with um, those people to define interesting use cases. Some of the pilot sites have some very similar use cases and others have their own that are quite unique. Um, as we were designing these use cases, there are aspects to them that we can't fulfill within the consortium itself. And we knew this going into the project. And so we had planned to have these open calls um, first, this first open call to fill those gaps within the project. And so we have these priority gaps at each of the pilot sites that are in the open call text. And um, that is where the applicants and um, will come in to the project at this point.
So our main goals um, are basically to fill both the technological and service gaps in these pilot use cases. Um, we want to also test and demonstrate um, our software ecosystems um, capacity for integrating external solutions. And we want to support the ongoing development and refinement of the Faron um, platforms as we're doing this. And that is the main things that we want to achieve with this stage of the open call. And I want to emphasize that this is your chance as applicants to help us shape this ecosystem, to demonstrate your solutions to a potentially new audience, and in doing so, support the well being of older adults and become part of an important European project. So, with that, I will hand over um, control of this presentation to my colleague, Alenka Volk. Thank you, Mike. Okay, Alenka, you should be able to control now. Okay. Hello from my side also to everybody who joined us today. To start, I will explain a little bit about the rules for participation in this core uh, budget, maximum budget earmarked for the financing, financing of projects under this open call is 1 million euro, and the maximum eligible sub-grant amount is 50 euro per applicant. Thus, we expect to found 20 third-party projects. For this open call, the same eligibility criteria as for H2020 participation rules apply. Specifically, here I would draw your attention to Article 10. And uh, all participant, uh, participants must be registered in a EU member state or in a Horizon 2020 associated country. In this respect, I would uh, invite you to check list that is available in the Pharaon Open Call text document. There is a link provided and you can check yourself if you are in one of those states that are eligible for participation. And uh, applications will not be accepted from persons or, or organizations who are partners of our call. Uh, so we want to, uh, to, to make this clear. Solution providers can come from a variety of entities. So you are, if you are an SME or micro SME, or if you are a web entrepreneur, or you have individual sole trade, industrial organizations, it is not so much important also other eligible organizations uh, with high TRL level activities can participate. Um, but please have in mind that applicants must be previously registered in the participant register of the participant portal and have a validated nine digit participant with identification code. For those who are not so familiar with this code, it is a very, very simple pro uh, process. You have links in the call document and in the online form, and it will take you maximum 15 minutes to receive this, uh, this uh, PITS code. But um, one also important information is that in case your PITS will not be validated uh, during this uh, application phase, you can validate it before signing the cascade grant agreement in case you are successful with your applications. Exclusion criteria. Here we have to be careful and uh, applicants will be excluded from participating in the call for, for proposals and from the Cascade Grant Award, if they are in any of the exclusion situations in the Article 136 of the EU Financial Regulation 38, 
this reg regulation is related to 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 the bankruptcy insolvency um, or any other administrative uh, procedures or or um, um, in case you are violating uh, intellectual property rights or something like that and um, all applicants will have to clearly declare that they are not in one of the mentioned uh, situations and uh, you will do this by clicking all required uh, by ticking all required boxes in section three of the online application form here on the right side is a screenshot of how this form looks in the Evalato, which is our online submission system. Evaluation process. At this stage, you are submitting proposals. One, once uh, the proposal will be submitted, you will receive reception notification. Then uh, all submitted proposals will be first checked for eligibility and uh, those who will be eligible will be further processed uh, uh, in the evaluation phase. Evaluation will be performed by two external experts and uh, the assessment of each proposal will, will be based exclusively on the information provided by the applicants in the uh, submitted paper. So expert will be, experts will be instructed to ignore any hyperlinks or external information. So um, I just want to, to stress that it is important that you really ex uh, respect this 10 page limit. So um, after uh, evaluation phase, all proposals that will be evaluated and will be above threshold, will be further ranked according to their final score. And based on the budget available, final list of selected proposals will be defined. And all applicants will be informed about the final results. So in any case, if you are successful or if the budget will not allow to finance your proposal, you will receive notification. And those who will be selected will then sign grant agreement with Inori New Center of Excellence. Award criteria. Uh, the, the evaluations will be performed based on three award criteria, impact, innovation and technology, and quality and efficiency of the implementation. And uh, during this last one, the experts will indicate also whether the participant has or will have a sufficient operational capacity to successfully accomplish foreseen tasks in the proposed work plan. So please remember to detail this information. Maximum thresholds for each criteria is set to five points and overall 15, but um, also minimum threshold is set which is three for first and last criteria and four for, for uh, excellence. And uh, here I would like to stress that if a proposal is falling below the overall or, or and the individual threshold announced, uh, it will be rejected. So you have to fulfill uh, both thresholds. Total financial support awarded by the Cascade Funding Partner may amount to up to 100% of the eligible costs for beneficiaries that are non-profit legal entities and up to 70% of the eligible costs for those who are profit legal entities. And in the, in the proposal template when where the budget section is you will see uh, a place where you have to indicate whether you are um, asking for 100% or 70% of co-financing or financing. Uh, and uh, this is res in respect to what kind of 
entity you are. Here are also important eligible costs. All, practically all costs are eligible. Uh, uh, Horizon 2020 rules divide them between direct and indirect costs. And in the direct costs section, you have personnel costs, direct cost of subcontracting, and other direct costs. In respect to subcontracting sub costs, please note that they are possible, but only in duly justified cases. We really want to stress that. And uh, for indirect costs, 25% flat rate apply. And for those, accounting documentation is not necessary only for direct costs. Timeline, we are here in the middle of the uh, application phase process. Um, so you are invited to visit our website. You will find all relevant documents there, um, as well as link to the online application form, which is in the Evalato platform. And uh, just let me to, let me stress that there are two important steps to have in mind in this respect. First is that you have to register to this platform. One re once registered, you will have access. You can start drafting your proposal and come back later. You can save it, no, no problem. And uh, this online uh, application form consists of a set of uh, questions and uh, and fields to be filled in but it there is also an important part which is you have to upload um, your proposal in word um, this proposal template is available on website and it is very crucial part of application because the, this text um, in in the word uh, document will be the one that evaluators will later inspect and judge whether it fits to what our call is aiming or not. So once you have all uh, fields filled and once you have this um, document uploaded, you can submit your proposal and then you will also receive confirmation. If anything goes wrong, please contact us, I will show our contacts later. So please have in mind end of December is deadline, five o'clock Central European time. And uh, after this evaluation period and selection period will follow expectably during January and February and the end of February, we should have uh, information for applicants ready. Then end of March, we anticipate to, to finalize this um, process of, of signing grant agreements. And uh, we will be very happy to welcome you on board our partnership from beginning of, Mar of uh, April, end of March, uh, beginning of April, to start our six months work together. We are, uh, we are here for all your questions. Uh, as mentioned before, please consult first all documents that are available. All information are in. If you have any additional question, you can send it to opencall at paraon.eu uh, email, or check first if it has already been asked and is available under frequently asked questions in the section of our Pharaon web page. As Mike mentioned before, recording of this webinar will also be available. So you will also be able to consult certain uh, topics to see if you understood everything well. Thank you very much, Mike. Okay, thank you, Alenka.
And uh, I see there's already questions in the Q&A, so um, we can go ahead and take a look at those, and we will come to the Q&A section at the end for anything that we don't answer in, in the meantime, and we may address them as well there. Um, so now we are going to go into the part where we tell you a little bit about the pilot needs in the open call text. You saw some description of the, the gaps, and we'll give you a little bit more context to the, the setting of those and maybe a little bit um, more context about those gaps in, in this case as well. Um, if there is something of these that are of, of interest to you for your potential solutions, um, this is a good time to pose those questions as we do have um, a variety of the representatives from the project here as well to help answer them. And uh, for those of you that are um, FARA on pilot uh, representatives or technology partners and you want to be panelists, please just send me a signal in the chat and I will promote you and I have a moment. Okay, um, we will start with the Slovenian pilot, as that is where um, I am from, and I'm the pilot coordinator for this particular pilot, and we'll start here. Um, so our pilot is a retirement home um, in Izola, a small coastal city in Slovenia. And um, the home has approximately 205, 205 beds, so places for residents, and um, a growing percentage of those residents are presenting some signs of cognitive de decline. The campus is open, yet mobility is challenging for a lot of residents, and so many um, residents have a difficult time finding and participating in community events, which leads to some challenges related to social exclusion and loneliness that we are interested in addressing. Um, in our pilot, we have a variety of technologies. We have some smart bands that record uh, things like activity and heart rate. We have indoor environmental quality sensors, um, a TV-based communication systems uh, from SendLab, a senior phone, which is a modified interface for phones uh, designed specifically for seniors to simplify the main things that they would want to do. And we have a front end to visualize, manage, and track the health indicators and um, some back end uh, systems that manage the sensor communication data recording access and these things. And for our priority needs, uh, one of the things we want to accomplish is increased physical activity and helping uh, improve overall well-being of the residents. And so part of this is recording that act, uh, the physical activity that is in place now and monitoring the indoor conditions. Um, but we want to add personalized coaching and recommendations uh, for residents to help them increase their activity in a gentle and positive way. And then our second uh, gap is focused on reducing the loneliness that I mentioned by people not being able to easily participate in community events um, as well. We have the calling in place already so people can be in touch with um, offsite uh, caregivers or loved ones, but now we would like to help people um, attend community events. And part of that is a listing um, system that allows for RSVP and um, preferably to help um, coordinate transport as, as well to and from events. Um, the language of any interface and support material that we would need in Slovenia is, of course, Slovenian, but multilingual support is appreciated. We're in a officially bilingual area with Italian, um, but there are some Croatian speakers in the area as well. And uh, during this phase of the testing, we would expect 30 to 50 persons uh, using the solutions um, from either either side, if there's an event listing, people input, inputting events, and then older adults um, browsing the system and um, signing up for them. Now we'll go to Italy. Oops. Um, the Italian pilot is split between two locations, one in Tuscany and one in Apulia. Um, the main objective is to provide personalized and integrated care to frail older adults. And to do that, they're delivering home services um, that are focused on monitoring um, stimulation, both cognitive and stim uh, physical stimulation, and also promoting social inclusion. They have a large group of um, participants in Italy, 300 older adults, 300 informal caregivers, and 100 formal caregivers. 
And their priority gaps are um, a solution that would provide personalized cognitive stimulation and activity and progress tracking and then uh, coaching as well. And serious games is the preferred methodology um, for that. Um, they are also looking for a digital solution to utilize the data that is collected um, from the physical activity uh, monitoring and then to provide uh, personalized coaching as well to help improve the health and well being of the older adults using those systems. Um, the language is um, Italian, and the expected impact during this period is about 75 older adults um, in both pilot sites. And then the informal and formal caregivers would be uh, using those systems as well and, and supporting the older adults in their use. Um, next, we have Portugal. Um, Portugal, like Italy, is a single pilot that's addressed in two different locations, Coimbra and Amadora. Um, the pilot um, is, is really focused on developing and implementing citizen-focused solutions, so really trying to help people engage as citizens, um, integrating care and planning, and integrating infrastructures and processes, and then also knowledge sharing as well. Um, we should emphasize here too that there is a big focus on uh, the relationship between the community, the environment, and then the people that are involved in, in those things. A little bit about each of the pilot locations here. Um, in Coimbra, um, there is a an organization, it's a social nonprofit organization that has 12 daycare centers, um, home care service centers, nursing homes, um, a chronic disability and impairment home, long-term care units, and they serve over 3,000 uh, users as well. Um, there is a relationship with the Marine Environmental Science Services Center that is um, helping link people to the environment as well. In Amadora, um, there's a similar organization, a social nonprofit organization um, that is that has day centers, home care support services, nursing homes, long-term care units, and rehabilitation clinic as well. There are more than 6,000 users daily, but it's not just older adults. About 600 or 10% are um, older adults. And so there's some crossover there that is important as well. Um, the priority gaps, there are two, one for each of the locations. Um, in Coimbra, the priority gap is related to participating in community life, and the request there is a digital application that promotes engagement with nature, preservation within cities, um, and mental and physical activity of older citizens, but again, not exclusively older citizens. They would just be the primary target in this particular case. And then um, ensuring a safe and comfortable environment. Um, so this would be a domotic system to monitor and ideally prevent falls um, while detecting early signs of illness. Um, these gaps are related to these use cases that were mentioned. And you can see here in, in red, um, the areas to be addressed by the open call. Um, so the mobile app uh, that was mentioned before is focused on connecting uh, people with nature as they are engaged with it and doing uh, cognitive stimulation as a part of that. And then the other uh, is focused on say ambient and assisted living and this multi-dimensional um, simulation as well. Um, and here we have the aspect of connecting people with uh, nature again. And so this would be the app um, that is um, proposed here, um, allowing people to enjoy and have fun as they connect with the green and blue areas around the city and near their homes. Um, would like to contribute information relevant to other citizens. So um, reporting accessibility and security issues with the area, uh, reporting areas of great interest or reporting degradation and um, then promoting active participation and knowledge building um, about 
biodiversity and environmental conversation of urban areas and doing in doing so cognitive um, stimulating cognitive capacities. Um, so visualization is important, uploading and storing photographs um, is important. Um, of course, security measures should be involved. Notifying users about um, existing missions at the sites um, should be important as well. And allowing access to a um, to the back office and, and website in order to manage and moderate this information is requested as well. Uh, we will come to uh, Q and A a little bit later. Um, I think it's uh, Ramon Martinez, um, so we can uh, come to that later, or you can send a question in, in chat or using the Q and A, and we will uh, address it. If there's something urgent, please just put it in chat. Um, okay, and then the ambient assisted living aspect of the Portuguese pilot um, is, is focused on a demotic system that would monitor falls, ideally detecting um, falls before they happen, um, and detecting early signs of illness as well that are related to that. And since this would be installed in uh, individual homes, it should be easy to install um, and thereby allow the older adult to remain independent longer. Uh, the language is Portuguese. Um, the services should be uh, adapted to the target group, which is persons that are 65 um, years of age and older. And participation um, is expected to be uh, more than 400 between the two sites. And in the Netherlands, uh, we have another pilot. And this pilot is focused on um, mobility using the plus bus service that also brings people together and helps build community and in sense of involvement. And so the pilot already has the plus bus service um, and they have several apps for community building and happy, healthy aging related to uh, activity. Um, but they need some extra things to make a more complete service and particularly with some lessons that were learned during the COVID lockdown. Um, so these extra needs are related to connecting the people that are users of the plus bus system um, beyond the actual um, plus bus activities and then also coaching for physical activity. Um, so the first need in the Dutch pilot is related to virtual travel. So this is the aspect of um, joining the plus bus trips from their own home as needed, um, and also being able to interact, see chat and text with the group that is using the bus. So if, if one person can't go on um, the plus bus excursion, then they would still be able to participate uh, with their, their friends that they've made on the trips in the past. Um, this is, it's important to note that this um, sort of connection should be available for individuals in their private homes, but also in um, nursing or retirement homes as well. Um, sharing memories is another aspect of this. So uh, the experiences that people have on plus buses are important. And one thing that uh, they would like to do is be able to share them with people outside the platform. This could be family or other friends or um, new potential new friends. And so uh, there is a request to have a system that would uh, extract the memories of older adults, allow them to, to share that information. Um, and then translate it into a shareable format where it can be um, browsed or um, shared with others. And we have a um, request for a motivating and personalized coaching system as well um, related to physical activity. So there is a sensor provider, Maastricht Instruments, um, which is collecting some data. And now uh, they would like to turn that data into meaningful coaching through a medium 
that older adults would prefer, and they're mostly women using it in this case. And um, a traditional app on a tablet or a phone is um, acceptable, but there is a strong preference for something that's more embedded in, in the home um, through lights, architecture, or, or wearables um, that provides intuitive coaching rather than just um, numbers and text. The language is Dutch. There are more than 50 users, and partners can be from outside the Netherlands as well. Uh, and now we move to Spain, where we have two separate pilots. The first is Andalusia. Um, the pilot here is quite distributed. Um, so there are um, a lot of people spread around this area. And the focuses are on um, associations, um, telecare, and home care services. Um, in Andalusia, there is a largely rural population with a growing share of older adults. Um, the main things they're interested in in Andalusia are addressing loneliness and unwanted um, social iso isolation and to support uh, the well being of people um, as their dependency on carers increases. So, the Andalusian pilot has developed four UK use cases um, that are related to improving digital skills so um, older adults can engage with the digital um, community more easily, um, community participation cognitive stimulation and stimulation for physical activity and mobility as well. And again, the focus being on supporting people uh, to be more included socially and on health prevention and promotion. Um, so the first request is a software solution that provides cognitive stimulation. Um, and also includes aspect of progress monitoring and coaching. Um, serious games are, again, the medium of choice here um, that provide multiple levels of difficulty that allow people to progress um, and then can be adapted to the needs of the individual to address their particular cognitive profiles. Um, the goal would, of course, be to work on skills like calculation, language, memory, attention, orientation, and other critical aspects here. And that professionals should be able to monitor this. So the professional care should be able to engage as well. Um, then they also request an e-learning platform that will uh, help promote the digital skills of, of older adults. Um, and so there should be basic information about engaging with the digital world, internet access, digital devices, security, safety, and um, some more specific information to help provide these people with greater digital literacy. And, and these days, that provides autonomy. Um, there is a request for a matching algorithm that could be deployed on the CENTAB social network. CENTAB is one of the partners in the project. Um, and they would have a way to um, implement this algorithm that would allow people to with similar tastes and hobbies to be linked and provide friendship re recommendations. And um, they're also looking for a virtual assistant that responds to voice commands um, in addition to a touch interface. Um, again, this would be linked to the social network send tab. Um, so this would be uh, primarily interacting through voice, but having a, a system um, that would also support virtual assistant um, facilities using a touch interface on, say, a phone or a tablet. The language is Spanish, and they expect more than around 250 people to use the solution. Finally, we have the other Spanish pilot, which is in uh, Murcia, in the region of Murcia. And um, Murcia is an autonomous community in Spain that's on the southeast coast um, with Andalusia to the south and um, Castilla-La Mancha and Valencia to the north and west, west and north. Um, and there's a coastal area as well. There's about 1.5 million people there. Um, and 16% uh, are aged 65 and older. The objectives of the pilot are to deploy a new line of telecare that transcends the current model of healthcare services, where 
that's based on patients requesting um, help and instead to turn that around and make sure that Uh, to turn that around and to make sure that people are um, are addressed before they way before they have issues. Um, so the target groups are older adults, um, aged 55 and older that are primarily suffering from chronic help, um, heart failure. There are informal caregivers. Um, relatives and neighbors, et cetera. And there are also health professionals from public health services of the region. Um, there's, of the challenges in the project, there are two priority ones. There's health status definition and monitoring progress over time, and then non-intrusive monitoring and alarm triggering. And these are related to the scenarios that are deployed, the use cases. One is the angel of health, and the other is care at home. Um, there are a variety of technologies that are deployed, um, which leads to um, some gaps uh, in, in the project um, or in the pilot. And so those are related to non-intrusive monitoring of, of cardiac um, status, so blood pressure at least, but also easy to use ECG would be valuable. Um, systems for tracking and detecting changes um, in, in body such as weight, but other key majors are of interest as well. And then a voice-based interaction system that isn't waiting for the user to initiate the um, interaction. Um, as background to this, they are tracking heart rate and physical activity. They have um, smart plugs and light bulbs and energy meters. Um, it allows them to do some detection of, of changes there and to optimize that use. And there's also a non-intrusive monitoring system called AmiCare as well. Um, these are the priorities that I just mentioned. Um, so now I'd like to make a couple comments about um, privacy and um, data protection and ethics. Um, before we do that, um, I see, Ramon, that there is still a question. Um, can you put that into? the Q&A or um, into the chat, and so we can try to address it. Thank you. Um, so privacy, data protection, and, and ethics are, are very important to this project. Um, there's been quite a lot of, of background work to set up a um, system where we are prioritizing um, the health, dignity, and well-being of, of older adults through an ethical approach and that also includes aspects of privacy and data protection as well. Um, oops. Um, so we have a data management plan in, in place, and this is um, adapting and growing as we um, are tracking new data. Um, each pilot, though, has its own ethical considerations, and um, new partners will need to comply with those um, those considerations in, in each place. Um, they are fairly reasonable things, um, but uh, because this is a um, funded project and we are doing introducing new technologies, um, most pilots, um, all pilots have had at some degree to prepare ethics applications for review by different committees that have been approved. And so we need to work within the, the boundaries of those um, guidelines as well. There are some ethical guidelines um, in the guide for applicants, and I strongly suggest that um, each of the potential applicants reads that information as well. Oops, sorry. Um, now we will go on to some information about the platform ecosystem and our um, DevOps. And for that, I will pass the control over to uh, my colleague, Gabriella Gio Matteo from Engineering in Italy. Okay, yeah. you should be able to control now. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yeah, so talking about uh, the uh, technologies, um, we defined, we have defined in, uh, in Pharaon uh, reference architecture, uh, that is used by all the pilots that uh, Mike presented and that guides the integration of the different technology used by each pilot um, uh, between them. 
so each uh, in the in the picture you can see the reference architecture that is composed by different layers uh, so we have uh, sensor layers on the on the bottom and then uh, we have network layers uh, data layers where we have services to uh, collect data process data and uh, analyze the data and then on top uh, we have uh, service layers and application layers so each uh, technology that we use in Paron is uh, mapped in one uh, or more uh, functional boxes that we see in the reference architecture and and it is integrated with the other technologies on the basis of the uh, communication needs described by the reference architecture so this ensure that uh, uh, yeah this this ensure uh, that uh, we can uh, reuse the same technology on different pilots or use different technologies that play the same role implements the same uh, functional boxes in the architecture uh, on different pilots and for uh, the new technology that will be uh, brought by the uh, open call, uh, we, uh, we plan, of course, to use the same approach. So they will be uh, mapped in, uh, in uh, one or more tech, uh, functional boxes in the reference architecture and will be integrated with the other technologies um, that are used in the, in the pilot where the, this new technology will, uh, will be used also. And to guide this, uh, this process, uh, we uh, have in place a, a, a well-defined, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, to guide this process, we have defined uh, um, a rigorous, let's say, integration, testing, and release process uh, that is adopted by all the technologies. And this, uh, offer support for the integration in the in the in the project and aims to deliver uh, high quality software and aims to uh, solve all the possible potential integration issues uh, before we put uh, the new technologies in the production environments where the pilot uh, will use it and this will also uh, ensure and speed up uh, the, the releases of the software and uh, and ensure that we will have less issues once we are using the, the, the technologies in the during the pilot um, execution and we leverage on three different uh, aspects uh, one is to is to have automation of the uh, integration testing and release basis of the uh, software uh, life cycle uh, so we offer a, a specific group on gitlab.com uh, where uh, technology can upload uh, source code and from then from there we, we we offer also a continuous integration environment uh, where we can automate uh, the different phases of the integration. So from the compilation of the code to testing, execution of, of test weight, unit test or functional test, page, packaging of the code, uh, additional validation steps, and also the deployment in a staging environment, which is the second aspect uh, that we focus on. And that is a, a an environment, a unique environment where all the technologies in uh, in Pledger in uh, in Faron are are deployed, uh, so that uh, this environment can be used by developers to test the integration between uh, uh, their technology and the other technologies, and uh, it's also used as a, an environment to execute. Uh, uh, test suites that uh, we defined uh, to ensure that the integration between different technology are in place and uh, co function uh, correctly. And uh, as I said before, um, uh, we put a lot of focus on the automation of this task uh, because uh, we can ensure, uh, I mean, a faster release cycle and uh, a more rigorous uh, approach. So to benefit from all these uh, aspects, yeah, okay. 
to benefit from this process, uh, of course, we, uh, technology should provide uh, some support, uh, developers of technologies, to uh, automate the pipelines, to provide uh, and define test suites that we can use to, uh, to test the technology's functionalities and the integration with other uh, technologies already in Faron. And in case the source code, uh, the, the source code of the technologies uh, is available, uh, we can automate the full process uh, as we described uh, before. Of course, we also support uh, not uh, I mean, closed source components or proprietary components. And uh, the phases of the integration are the same, of course. What uh, is different in this case is that uh, parts of this integration process will be carried out by the owner of the different technology um, that will take care of uh, building phase and uh, uh, deployment phase of this technology in the staging environment. Uh, I would pass the, the floor to Andre to uh, yeah to continue with the support for developers. Andre, you should have uh, control now. Oops. Thank you, thank you, uh, Gabriela. Thank you, Mike. Hope you hear me okay. Uh, yes. gr greetings from Zagreb. My name is uh, Andre Gregoric. I work at Exelicola uh, which is uh, also one of the technical providers, and I also act here as. Uh, uh, work with for developers, integrators, and, and so on. So ju just to uh, be on point, so we also uh, envision technical one-stop shop, which is established and continuously being updated with different uh, uh, updates uh, in relation to guides, links, software, personnel, contacts, and so on. It, it is hosted on the Git lab so for accessing you just need a gitlab uh, com account and then we add you to add uh, internal and also you as possible uh, external uh, partners to the Ferron group uh, and give access to specific technologies for example different technologies some technologies are used in just one of the pilots some technologies in more of the pilots and each technology is described with the contacts uh, how to connect uh, and and this kind of uh, information is given uh, in relation to the Ferron DevSecOps lifecycle. We have, uh, uh, let's say, done analysis and uh, basically have some preferred uh, preferred tools uh, as just a recommendation. Of course, uh, the the main integration points are the online APIs, and we here just uh, let's say uh, give some recommendation or on the each uh, life cycle phase uh, tooling that could help and facilitate this kind of um, uh, work as also uh, Gabriel men mentioned uh, before. So the technical one-stop shop is uh, also one, uh, one way of addressing, uh, can I uh, switch the screen? I should. Uh, I see. Okay. okay. Just okay. <laughs> yeah, one one way of uh, uh, let's say one umbrella term for the for this uh, GitLab hosted uh, uh, environment where we uh, also keep up with the developers handbook, which is uh, a set of uh, guidelines, how tos, best practices, installation guides for some specific. Uh, uh, technologies or connection points and also some usage instruction you have you can see the screenshot on, on the right what is uh, current uh, let's say uh, table of contents uh, and uh, this is also one of the ways how we uh, try to maintain uh, the let's say orchestration or the uh, ongoing uh, work as efficient as possible and also give most important information here instead of different uh, documents emails and and so on so uh, onboarding also of the new people is uh, is uh, that way uh, now the Ferron apis as i mentioned we just focus that they are uh, functional reliable okay compliant to standards of course documented in order for the uh, let's say consumers to be able to use them and consume them and of, of course accessible since uh, different uh, let's say technology providers also uh, maintain their own 
uh, let's say, uh, uh, deploy different uh, technologies in different, uh, let's say, uh, environments like staging and production and so on. But uh, anyhow, what is also important that uh, uh, alongside of the existing uh, APIs uh, of the technologies that, that are offered, uh, we also, of course, also uh, envision developing new ones. And on the right hand side, it's basically this, uh, let's say, methodology to uh, to compose or to create the new APIs. Uh, which goes for un understanding some technology, identifying desired outcomes, and then uh, mapping the requirements, ident identify API boundaries, and then uh, choosing uh, choosing the API style, uh, document it, and deliver uh, deliver the integration. So this is, uh, for example, uh, we are not expecting that uh, every. Uh, so for example, if some technology wants uh, wants to be connected and so on, we just see what is what is the what are the requirements, what capabilities we have to offer, and then we, we can also uh, adapt and open up new APIs as, as needed. Uh, so uh, one of ways of how we orchestrate this and make things, uh, let's say, as, as easy as possible is using the REST API interactive documentation for uh, so this based on the open API specification where, where we, uh, and let's say, uh, recommend that every partner, especially the uh, platform providers, uh, offer uh, this kind of description of uh, always up to date and interactive uh, API uh, documentation where you, you can also uh, access and consume uh, di different APIs. Uh, now, from the technologies uh, support tools, uh, I will just mention two things. Now, the logging support, which has been also developed and is planned to be. Uh, incorporated in every pilot site uh, in order to handle uh, center, uh, centralized handling of the, all, all the logs and so on. And then the monitoring support when we also uh, uh, envision some different uh, UIs to, to monitor the progress of the deployments uh, and so on. Uh, now, the dev sandboxes are also just one of the ways how we, uh, let's say, envision uh, onboarding of the new developers. For example, if someone does not want to know, uh, it, uh, install different tools and so on, this is uh, just one of the ways uh, how we su uh, support uh, the, the, the development. So with these um, development sandboxes, both Python-based, Java-based, uh, which, uh, which is just uh, uh, saves time and uh, makes makes all the de developer experience, uh, uh, let's say, uh, more streamlined. Uh, now, what is important for the let's say, external uh, developers? So, uh, once when the VP6 uh, external organization is accepted, of course, then the external developer is confirmed. Uh, so we get the identities of the technical people who will uh, work here uh, with us. Uh, then developer is granted access to different uh, environments and uh, according to documentation and everything what, what is needed uh, to facilitate uh, our integration. And then the role is defined, authentication, authorization done, and then the developer becomes active participants like more or less uh, very similar like we have for the internal uh, current uh, Ferron partners. And that's it, what I wanted to, to say on the ways of uh, working from the let's say, technology support side. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, so now we come to our Q&A section. We currently have one open um, question. It's about the Andalusian pilot in particular, but as a more general thing, uh, we'll come to that. Uh, Anna, I need to promote you to panelist. Um, okay, so if I'm missing other um, representatives of Faron, please uh, that that want to say something, please send a, a message in chat, and and I will find you and. Um, add you as a panelist. Um, Anna, there's an open question about the Andalusian pilot. Do you see it in the Q&A? Yes, well, regarding the, um, the budget uh, dedicated to the, um, the hardware that uh, the pilot needs, uh, it's true that in our pilot, uh, we need some budget to, um, to have, for example, tablets or the devices 
to um, to deploy the software solution. So it will be ide ideal if um, the um, external companies that are interested in the um, open calls could um, could uh, take into account that uh, if they have any solution, they they should um, provide with the hardware and the software too, not only with the software. I don't know if uh, if I answer the question of Iñaki or Iñaki. I, I can perhaps add um, here that there is a um, some of the pilots will have different hardware and equipment available for for this testing, and in in some cases the um, the applicants will have to supply some hardware of their own. Um, so. For example, if there's a particular type of, of sensor that you wanted to deploy, whether it's wearable or um, a built-in sensor into a room or something, that would have to come out of, of the budget. And in this case, on a, are there existing um, tablets and, and something in the pilot already? And um, can those be used to deploy the the devices uh, the the solution I think is what Anaki is is asking. If uh, if I can add one thing uh, about Please. this point, uh, um, uh, yes, uh, uh, Mike already said about that. So the pilot will be active by their own with some specific services based on specific technology. So it's likely that uh, they should have already a tablet or, or a, an internet connection, of course. So it, it, uh, for the participants to the call, this should be in some case consolidated. I don't think they are interested in what are the budget of the, the pilot. So they should not know about that. They should just provide an application, uh, a solution, a proposal that makes sense. And uh, if there is a particular devices that are required for their proposal, I think that uh, uh, if it's sustainable uh, around uh, within the budget uh, available, it's okay. But if not, or if it is uh, something specific or particular, we invite you to contact us, uh, the, the staff team related to the Cascade call to discuss about that. So, uh, because uh, I think that we could accommodate a solution that could be useful for the pilots within the, the, the budget that is available, available. And we are confident on that. Also on some specific uh, solutions that could be proposed in the topics that have been explained. So uh, we invite you to, to be in touch with us if you have some concrete actions, also to verify what are the hardware or uh, technologies already available that could be integrated also with your uh, with the, your uh, solution. So you can use the the tools uh, for question and answer also by email, and we will be happy to support you because uh, uh, we we don't want to to make uh, some uh, money distributors for what I call. We should really catch a solution that can enhance the farm project. So that's the point. Yeah. So we need to contact us and to discuss also in advance about solution to, to, to go in a good proposal, let's say. Yeah, so we should note too that in, in the Andalusian case, I think, you know, there's there's very many participants and the solution may not need to reach all of them to demonstrate sufficiently the integration with the platform and the effectiveness of the solution. So even a subset could work. Um, it's also important in this case to say that if there are proprietary solutions of your organization, that the project can't buy them, um, but that you can provide them in, in the budget. And again, it needs to be sufficient enough to demonstrate the, the integration and, and the value. Um, so I, I would invite you to send an email to, to us at the open call at farahon.au about um, more particular details uh, about that site. And we'll be in touch with the, the pilot hosts and, and get you the answers that you need. So thank you very much for that question. And uh, Christoph Seters, I hope I got that right, is asking that is, is there a possibility for an SME working on smart bed monitoring and personalized care for senior care facilities to join Farah on pilots? And if yes, what would be the most effective way um, to get in touch? Um, you, you can write to us in this first open call. Um, I, I will note that we have 
another future open call coming, which will be more open for different solutions. Um, so this open call is really focused on those priority gaps dis described. If, if your smart bed monitoring can address one of those solutions, um, then I would invite you to apply. If it's sort of outside of the scope, um, we have a future open call. Um, basically about one year from now, we will open up another call um, where we will be open to different types of, of technologies as well. Um, in, in the meantime, do feel free to email us and, and if you need some um, assistance trying to figure out if, if your solution can match to one of the um, existing priority gaps, we can help you with that. Um, there's one question that from Alec Alexopoulos about the Slovenian pilot um, that got answered a little bit ahead of time. Um, so can additional hardware be employed, um, for example, a stress sensor um, for skin conductivity and, and EMG sensors and e uh, leggings, for example? Um, yes, that, that is possible. That would need to be um, included in, in the budget since we already have some sensors uh, available that, that are being deployed in the pilot. And so if that could be included and demonstrated and, and show the value, um, to addressing our priority needs. So again, that would need to connect in the Slovenian pilot's case to, to coaching somehow, um, then that could be useful. Otherwise, um, if it's not related to those priority gaps, then that could be um, something that comes in, in one of the later calls as well. Uh, would anyone else like to raise a question? Or would any of the Faraon folks like to make a comment or statement? Ramon, I know you had your hand raised for a while, but it seems we've lost you. OK, then, if there are no further questions, um, I'll give it another minute in case someone is, is typing their question now, but then we will thank you for your participation. Uh, one more here. A couple more questions have come in. Excellent, very good. Um, so uh, first, uh, Jade, yes, the recording of this meeting will be available. Um, we will post it on the website, the faraon.au slash open dash calls. Um, that no, that website there, that's really hard to do. Um, we will post it on that link and um, then we will notify the participants of this that it is posted. So yes, it will be available. Thank you for that question. Um, and then the contacts for the open call, um, the the main contact i will i will type this answer here it's open call at faron.au um anyone can write to us at that email address that's in the the q a answers now um and we can provide you um, with more direct contacts to the particular um, pilots um or we can arrange uh, you know a meeting a joint meeting together with them as well um, and then there is a question to ask a bit more about the Mercia pilot gap. So uh, Francisco, I think you are here and um, can respond to that. Or perhaps Rafael. Hello. Ah, hello, Francisco. Hello, Mike. So uh, the question is, can you focus a bit more on Mercia pilot priority gaps? for what concerns, technological solutions you are looking for. Uh, Mike, can you move backwards? To... Yeah, I can do that. I will go here. OK, thank you. So what we are looking for is what is in the uh, orange uh, frame. We are looking for the thing is that uh, the cardiologist from the from our public health service provider are paying a lot of uh, paying a lot of are, are emphasizing a lot the need of uh, keeping control of 
both the blood pressure and also the uh, the weight of the of the patient suffering from chronic health failure. So that's so important that we will need to to have a let's say a trustful and consistent uh, system able to 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 register these two parameters more than most more than the the, the 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 weight they want to to know if there is a difference between uh, between the the measurement uh, every day so that can be a sign of that something is going going wrong and um, uh, in other uh, in another part they want to 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 implement such a kind of uh, system able to to interact by voice with the with the with the user, but uh, probably uh, we we want to put more preference on on the on these two uh, two the the two first uh, parameters the the blood pressure and the and the weight. But anyway, if we receive a voice based system that can uh, fit, we also uh, are going to take it in, into consideration. If you would like any. Uh, if you would like any any further explanation, please you can you can drop me an email and I will forward it to to the to the doctors that are involved on this. So I'm going to. He said, "Okay, David is asking about the um, the applications." The application. Uh no, it's it's a ten page application in our case, and we're we're strict about that limit. So, um, you can find the the template online, um, and uh, there you will find uh, the the limitations as well. We don't want to read forty five pages. We we want to read ten, and we only want you to have to write ten. Um, okay, and so Umbra, I think you received the answer from Francisco. Um, last call for questions, everyone, please. Um, yes, we will share the presentation as well. So we will upload that. Um, Maybe we'll make a, a few adjustments to better address some of the questions that are in here. We will also use these uh, questions um, to update our frequently asked questions and provide some some answers there as well. Um, so these answers will be carried over and available as well. Um, so we'll make a few updates and then we will convert it to PDF and make it available for you. Thank you. Okay. Then in that case, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. We definitely appreciate your interest, and we strongly encourage you to get in touch if you do have more questions. Um, we are looking forward to seeing your um, registrations and eventual applications. Um, we do advise that you take a look at the Evolato system um, early and register there so that you can um, so that you can see the system and make sure that you can address all of the, the check boxes there. You have access to the um, template as well. And um, please let us know if you have questions about any of that so we can provide you as much help as we can as soon as possible. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be uh, in touch to follow up with this um, when we post this, this information, the recording and the slides. Take care, have a great weekend and um, enjoy.